Good morning, Dr. Hammond. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Dr. Hammond is a professor at the University of Waterloo. Um, his research mainly focuses on reducing chronic disease, primarily in the areas of tobacco control, obesity prevention, and substance use policy. His full bio is available on our website. And as well, you're a member of our advisory board. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us this morning. My pleasure. So I know, Dr. Hammond, that um, uh, you have done a lot of research and study on vaping, and it's one of the subjects that comes back often when we're talking to our community of parents, parents being worried about it because it's fairly new, and they uh, feel that they don't have the um, information to be able to engage in conversation with their kids. So maybe we can help them a little bit this morning. Can you tell us what are the risks of vaping uh, for you specifically? Well, you know, vaping, it's not one product. It's a mode of delivery. Um, and, you know, we'll talk about this in a minute, but the first thing parents need to talk about their kids is what are they vaping? Because, you know, if, if a parent or a doctor or a teacher says vaping, well, we don't know if they're talking about nicotine e-cigarettes or whether they're talking about vaping cannabis or THC. Um, but the bottom line is, is that, Vaping delivers drugs with vapor rather than smoke, which is the, the typical replacement. And so you're still delivering a drug. Um, often there are other things mixed into the liquid or the solution that people vape. So that could be flavors, it can be other things. Um, and we don't know the long-term effects of vaping. So it actually took us a good 20, 30 years to figure out the risks of smoking after most people took it up in the 40s and 50s and 60s. Um, we expect it to be less than smoking. That doesn't say a lot. You know, smoking is like jumping off a 20-story building. Nothing kills people um, like uh, smoking does, uh, certainly nicotine. So we expect it to be less harmful than smoking, but still harmful because people are taking in typically an addictive drug in the form of nicotine and sometimes unknown chemicals from the other types of solutions. Okay, so there, there are risks involved. And, and what I'm hearing from you is we're in the early stages of finding out what, what yeah. those are specifically. Um, so if, if a parent approaches their kid about vaping and all of a sudden kids are saying, but you know, mom, dad, I hear that vaping is safer than smoking. What would you advise parents to say at that point? Is it true? Well, I know I don't use the word safer. Smoking isn't safe. So it's not about safe and safer. It's about harm and more harmful. So, I mean, the bottom line is that smoking cigarettes kills one out of every two long-term users. Your risk of dying from smoking as a long-term smoker are often worse than going off to war. Um, well, so to say that something's less harmful than smoking is, is faint praise. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, look, and what's confusing about this is that if an adult smoker is trying to quit and they can't quit another way, then e-cigarettes may provide one option for them to do so, and that's where people have got this idea that it's safer. But everything we know suggests that using e-cigarettes in the long term uh, can be harmful. It has an addictive drug, um, and again, to say it's less harmful than smoking isn't isn't uh, you know much in the way of of praise because pretty much everything is less harmful than smoking. So, is it you know can parents say that this is something that can harm their health? Yes. Now it's just like most other things. Most Canadians have tried smoking a cigarette at some point. Increasingly, most kids have tried vaping or tried an e-cigarette at some point. The risk is through regular frequent use. So parents, you know, it's the same way if you found that your kid has tried alcohol at a party. There's a difference between that sort of experimentation and regular use. So if parents are finding that their kids are vaping at school, they're vaping when they're alone, they're vaping every day, those are warning signs that, um, that this is something a little bit more than kids you know, experimenting with something new. We often um, tell parents or inform parents that it's a good thing to not just stop at, oh my God, I'm finding out that my kid is vaping or is using some substances, but try to look at why the context of it, the frequency. So I'm hearing the same thing with vaping. Well, that's exactly right. And, and I, I think you've hit the nail on the head, whether it's alcohol or cannabis or other substances, if kids are doing it very often, it's probably a sign that there's some other problem. There's some other challenge there. And you want to talk to your kids about that. 
Now, I would say that e-cigarettes are a little bit different than some other substances in that, you know, over the last couple of years, they have become a really cool young thing. And so lots of kids are trying them out of this sort of the fact that they're just around a lot more. Um, and, you know, that, um, but again, it's that transition to regular use, and I'd say daily use. And, you know, the story with cigarette smoking and nicotine. People think that, you know, they recognize smoking is bad, but, may, you know, how addictive is nicotine compared to other drugs? It's one of the most addictive drugs there is. Um, and what we're starting to see with kids is that we've seen a transition. Up until a couple of years ago, it was largely kids trying it once or twice. The products have changed. The nicotine concentration has gone up. The chemistry of the vapor has changed. And so we're starting to see kids use more frequently and daily. And again, that's probably a sign that um, what was maybe something to try for fun might be transitioning into something else. Interesting, because I had a question about what suggestions would you have for parents if those if their teens all of a sudden are are using regularly vaping at, at that point? Well, again, figure out what they're vaping. I assume that in the, for this context, we're still talking about sort of nicotine or what people call e-cigarettes. I mean, it, it's hard to believe, but a lot of kids that vape still aren't totally clear what they're vaping. See, because a lot of kids vape starting for the flavor, right? There's peanut butter and jam, there's chocolate chip cookie dough, there's unicorn horn, there's every flavor under the sun. Um, and believe it or not, some kids aren't aware that there is nicotine and really the level of nicotine. So that's one of the things to talk about with kids. Uh, the other thing is to talk about whether they're starting to feel like they need to use it. And I, I mentioned a couple of situations. Are you using it on your own? Are you using it in places where you probably shouldn't? Like you have to step outside of work or you're using it in the bathroom at school. Um, those are signs that it's transitioning and there might be signs of dependence emerge. And that's something you want to talk to your, to your daughter or your son about. Um, where do they see themselves? Do they just use it when other kids are around? I'd still suggest that they stop doing that. Um, but, you know, a lot of young vapors are now talking about how, geez, they feel a need to do it. And that can be sort of an opening part of the conversation um, because it's something that a lot of young vapors are curious about too. They don't know a lot about it, but they are curious about it. So it's something that parents and kids can sort of work through together, I think. Yeah, I appreciate uh, approaching the matter as, um, as, as being able to, to, to go further than the initial panic of saying, oh yeah. my God, my kid is vaping. So yeah. um, in the context of experimentation, we know that you know, adolescents will go through yeah. different stages of experimentation. So being able to ask more questions about context and what are they using? Do they even know what's in there? That's right. um, that, those are great questions for our parents when they're engaging in conversations. I want to talk about, because we've talked about nicotine and we've talked about the what's in it. Um, can you tell us a little bit about cannabis and vaping? Yeah. So this is, uh, honestly, if a lot of kids, I mean, people use different terms, but if they hear an adult saying vaping, uh, your son or daughter might actually be thinking that you're talking about cannabis. So, you know, e-cigarettes are very popular now but actually the technology started with cannabis and just to make this even more confusing for folks there's three ways to vape cannabis one of them is you can vape dried herb so what people would normally smoke in a pipe or a joint you put that in a device that you can hold in your hand and you vape it the second way is that people vape a uh, thc oil and this looks more like the sort of the e-cigarette so it's a solution you buy it, um, often you buy it as sort of a disposable or replaceable cartridge. Um, and, and then the third way is some parents may have heard of things like shatter and wax. So these are like sort of solids, like solid concentrates. And what you do is you put them in a little chamber. It again, looks like a little e-cigarette device and then you vape that. Here's the important point to remember. THC vape oils, and vaping solid concentrates are typically very potent. So parents out there that maybe smoked a joint in the 70s or 80s, the typical THC level would have been two to 5%. The potency of dried flour that people smoke now is about 20 to 25%. It's gone up a lot. Well, in these THC vape oils, they're often around 80 to 90%. Oh, yeah. So they are extremely potent and they are fairly new on the market. 
They're legally available uh, in every province. Quebec has a bit of a cap on the THC potency. So here's why it matters, because we've seen a huge uptake with nicotine cigarettes and products like Juul. You got your mango flavors, you've got high nicotine. Well, guess what? The same companies are now manufacturing vape oils. So you also have tasty flavors, you have the convenience, the modern cool factor, but you also have the THC potency of 80 to 90%, which is three to four times of what you can even get smoking a joint. Um, and so, and very, very few people are aware of that. Um, even kids probably don't have a good idea of THC and potency. So that's an important thing for parents to learn about what they're vaping and to have a conversation about what's inside those products and the potency. So did I hear you correctly? There's, there's flavored cannabis that, is, uh, that, you can, that you can vape? That's right. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's an unfortunate coincidence, but when Canada was doing its legal regulations for these vape oils, they thought, well, we, we'll use the same rules as e-cigarettes. There's a few flavors you can't have, but you can have fruit flavors and everything else. Well, since then, we've turned around and said, geez, putting all those flavors in e-cigarettes probably wasn't a great idea in terms of appealing to young people. But if you go on, I'm, I live in Ontario. Uh, I went on the Ontario Cannabis Store. That's the government-run cannabis store. And the homepage is all these beautiful fruit flavors of, of THC uh, vape oils. Um, so, mm -hmm. yes. So, and I, in our own work, we've seen a big increase. The fastest growing category is THC vape oils. And I believe it's for the same reasons as nicotine e-cigarettes, as I just said, it's super convenient. If you're a kid and you're trying to conceal it, it's very easy to conceal. You've got lovely flavors that you don't have when you smoke a joint uh, or a bowl or whatever. Uh, and, um, you know, it doesn't smell and everything else. So I think we're going to be talking a lot more about um, THC cannabis vape oils uh, in Canada, um, partly because, again, the potency and I think they have extra appeal to young people. Most people are fixated on talking about edibles. I'll just say that in the first four months that THC vape oils were legally for sale, uh, the Ontario store sold about four times more vape oils than edibles. So we need to sort of reorient our understanding of these newer forms of cannabis products. And parents should have some idea that, yes, you can vape. There's different ways of vaping, but the ones that the kids are probably using are actually one of the most potent forms of, of cannabis use out there. And we suspect that that might make kids more um, susceptible to dependence and maybe problematic use, but we're still learning about that. And have we seen an increase in usage um, when it comes to youth? Because you're talking about yes. adults and what was, so as yes. is these trends been similar with, with the youth segment? Uh, Oh, it is, it is not just similar, it's actually the youth that are driving the trend. So vaping skews heavily towards young people. That's true if you're an adult smoker trying to quit. It's true if you're a non-smoker picking up nicotine and it's also true for THC vape oils. So, um, you know, 15 to 19 year olds to young adults, they're actually most likely to use these products. We've seen the biggest increase in these groups. And look, I don't say this to be alarmist. You know, what we said a minute ago still applies, which is, well, in what context are your kids using it? Are they using it at times when they shouldn't, like during school or work? Um, how often are they using it? That all still applies. The concern, though, is that kids that are entering the market through these THC vape wells are actually entering at the deep end of the, of the pool, um, mm -hmm. rather than oh, at a puff on a joint or something like that. Now, it's still good that they're not inhaling smoke. If you, you know, in, in certain circumstances, if someone's going to, if you have a chronic cannabis user out there, it'd be better that they're not inhaling smoke. Um, but these are a fantastic starter product if you're trying to get kids uh, starting to use cannabis. And I think that's, that's an important part of the conversation. Well, ultimately, at Drug Free Kids, we're encouraging parents to start early conversations with their kids, yeah. well, even as a preventive measure maybe your kids hasn't started or hasn't experimented yet, if you equip your teen with the correct information yeah. of what they should be mindful of, hopefully they'll be making healthier decision when it comes to um, any substance use, including vaping, if they have the correct information and they know what to look for. So. That's right. And, you know, parents shouldn't be, shouldn't feel awkward about not knowing all the 
terms and the modes of use. It, it is tricky. Most doctors don't know. Most public health people just have sort of a loose understanding. So it's okay, you know, and in, <laughs> it, it's pro it was true 30 years ago. It's probably true now that most kids know more about this than their parents. That's okay. You know, cannabis isn't one product. It hasn't been for a long time, but now we have very different categories of products that affect people differently, different strengths, different, um, and it's okay if parents don't know all about them. You can ask your teen about them. Um, and, and, and vaping is a good example of that. And, and kids will have some knowledge of it, but you, you can ask your kids if they're using these products. So, so what kind of products do you use? Um, do you know how strong they are? Are they stronger than, you know? Uh, and the other really important thing to talk to your kids about with vaping THC oils is we, ha we can buy these products from the legal market and the illegal market. Mm -hmm. But you asked me about health risks a minute ago, and some of your parents out there will remember that we had what some people called an epidemic of serious lung disease from vaping last year. Yeah. Now, most people in their minds are thinking about nicotine e-cigarettes. In fact, the main products involved were THC vape oil bought from the illegal market. Now, what happened is, is in the solution where they put the THC, they put a chemical in there that they shouldn't have put in there that is highly toxic and ended up killing more than 60 people and thousands were, had cases of serious lung disease. So... The risks of these things, I, I say that assuming there's no contaminants in there. But of all the products that people buy from the illegal market, I would urge parents and youth to talk about not buying THC vape oils from the illegal market. Because even though we didn't have the same scope of problem in Canada, you can have chemicals in there that are contaminants. And it's because you breathe it into your lungs that is a problem. So that's a... Again, it's, a, it's probably more complicated than parents would like, but bottom line, do not buy vape oils from any sort of an illegal source. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it goes back to when you were saying, if kids are using, do they know what they're using, right? right. So taking it a little further, and even if they're in the mode of experimentation and wanting to you know, try it off what their friends have, at yeah. least come with the information of what's in there, yeah. being aware of what they're taking. That's right. That's exactly right. And that's true, as you point out, for a lot of different substances. Um, and you know what? That's kind of a conversation that some kids can engage in. And, and, and lots of kids won't know. The kids that are doing it frequently, they, you know, they're probably purchasing it or accessing it themselves. And that's a, that's a point of conversation for kids. Um, and it's not to say you need to get into the, the culture of use, but you know, often they have questions. Cannabis is funny in that you have half the users that overestimate risks, you have half of the population that underestimates the risk, but it's an, it's an active conversation and legalizing has contributed to that conversation. So if you can find the right tone and point of entry, this is something that you know, kids are both curious about and probably willing to talk a little bit about if you can get over that first threshold. Well, Dr. Hyman, I think that we've given a lot of great you know, information for parents to even start that conversation and keep it going. Um, I think that you've shared a lot of, you know, valuable data and information and, you know, options for parents to look at on how to approach the matter. So I thank you very much. We could have talked about it for a much longer time. It's such a rich conversation, but uh, that's all the time we have for today. I wanted to thank you for your time. Thank you.